So I am just getting back from New Orleans where I just photographed the New Orleans Saints versus the Dallas Cowboys. It was a really cool game. It ended up 12 to 10. No better way to watch a game than from the sidelines of a game. But I wanted to talk in this video a little bit about some of the gear that I use. So not only was I able to use my Sony a7R 4 for the first time in a sporting environment, so I got to test the higher ISOs, how the high ISOs looked with that, but also kind of putting the autofocus to the test. But I also got to test this paired with a 70 to 200 G Master and this guy, which is the 600 millimeter F4 G Master. So 600 millimeters. First of all, let's talk about focal range for football. 600 millimeter F4 is typically not my first choice for shooting football because 600 millimeters just feels a little bit too long if the action gets inside the 50 yard line. A lot of times what you'll see on the sidelines of an NFL game or a college football game are going to be lenses like a 400 millimeter f2.8. 400 millimeters is a nice focal range. You can kind of be on the sidelines shooting from the side of the action and still be able to get the entire person in frame. With this guy, you can't. You're just shooting torsos and faces from the sidelines. So I ended up shooting from the end zones a lot of the game. And as soon as the action got to the 50-yard line, I was having to go into vertical orientation just to get the entire player in the shot. And then once I was inside the 30-yard line, I was either going to be photographing faces with this guy or I could switch over to my 70-200, to 200, which I would have slung on my hip and shoot the red zone area with that lens. So in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how the autofocus and higher ISOs were working with the Sony a7R 4 and I wanna talk a little bit about how this thing performed in a sporting environment. So let's take a look. So the way I'm set up is I got the 600 on a monopod and then on a strap, I got my 70 to 200 on my strap on the R4, that way I can quickly grab it when the action gets too close for the 600, which is gonna be often. Okay, so during warmups, I started with the A7R Mark IV on the 600 millimeter lens. I knew that during the game, I was probably going to want to use the A9 for the majority of my 600 millimeter shots. Now the camera, it looked like this. Process version looks like this. Didn't do a lot. And if we zoom in to one to one on here, you can see that we're actually getting a little bit of motion blur and that accounts for the softness. I did have facial recognition and eye autofocus on at this time. Um, so it had nailed focus on his face, but if we go up to his hand, you can kind of see what's going on here. We're just getting a lot of motion blur, even at one one thousandth of a second. So a lot of times people ask me why I'm using such fast shutter speeds. That is why. When you're zooming way in on these really incredible athletes, you have to use a really fast shutter speed faster than you would for a slower athlete. So a lot of times I'm trying to shoot at 1 12 50th of a second. So if we continue on in the next shot, we have Drew Brees staring down. <laughs> Actually, they were joking with each other, but uh, talking with Dak Prescott. Again, this is 1,000th of a second, ISO 4,000. Straight out of camera, it looked like this. If we zoom in to look at the noise pattern of the A7R4, it definitely does have a fair bit of noise but you have to keep in mind that we're zooming in one to one on 61 megapixels, which you're never going to do. If we look at it full screen, you're never going to be appalled by that much noise. I found ISO 5000 to be very, very usable. I wouldn't hesitate to use this camera all the way up to 10,000 ISO. Moving on at this point, I felt like I was underexposing. So now we're looking at ISO 5000. If we revert to straight out of camera, I feel like this is a better exposure. If we zoom in on this noise pattern, straight out of camera, it's looking like this. With a little bit of processing, it looks like this. Definitely are noticing some noise in the shadows. I've done just the tiniest bit of noise reduction here. The A9 definitely does a better job with noise. 
So this shot is going to kind of show the strength of using this particular camera in a sporting environment. So this is the cropped image, but straight out of camera, you can see that we've cropped in a whole lot on this shot. And you often have to do that in sports. And what's nice about having 61 megapixels to crop in on is that you still end up with a nice sharp shot. Now this particular shot, I think it had actually grabbed focus on this guy's uh, numbers rather than Alvin Kamara, but as long as you're not zooming in too tight, I think there's enough action going on. It's a cool enough moment that the shot works. This is ISO 2500, cropped in pretty tight on the shot, but you can see when you're looking at the frame as a whole, it doesn't look too bad. Here's another shot taken with the A7R4, same settings. This is going to be with the 600 millimeters, which means that I actually forgot to change my ISO when I swapped cameras really quick. And so if we revert it back to straight out of camera, you can see it was pretty severely underexposed. But that's also the benefit of the Sony cameras is that they are something that is called ISO invariant, which means that I can boost the exposure back up. And it's going to be about the equivalent of double whatever your ISO is if you're boosting it up a stop. So this is going to look very similar to ISO 5000. I think the autofocus is definitely not doing quite as good. Can't really detect where my focus point was. It's not real super sharp. It's probably somewhere on his chest in this situation. Another shot taken with the A7R4, straight out of camera, underexposed again because I still had not boosted up my ISO. The full frame was actually a horizontal frame like this. And again, this is the benefit of having all those megapixels to play with is you can recompose your shot, which most sports photographers are having to do. When you're composing your shot on the sidelines, you're just trying to get all of the action in the frame and then you know that you're going to crop to that action. Having all those megapixels makes that work a lot better. I call this throwing into triple coverage. Straight out of camera looked like this. You can see that we're shooting at f2.8 again, which allows our ISO to be a little bit lower. And you can see that our blacks are nice and noise free straight out of camera. After processing, they're still pretty noise free. And the full frame actually looks something more like this. So you can see how much you're able to crop in on these shots is probably the biggest selling point for shooting sports with the A7R4. I don't feel like the autofocus did nearly as well as the A9, but it has the resolution that when you do get the shot, you can really compose and crop in on it quite a lot in these sports shots. Okay, let's take a look at some of the A9 images. This is one of the nice things about having this kind of focal range when you're just staying on the sidelines during warmups, you can really get some intimate portraits like this. It's, it's almost like uncomfortably tight, but eye autofocus was turned on and absolutely nailed focus on his eye. Again, we have Teddy Bridgewater giving me the stink eye, but I love these really tight shots that you can get with a 600 millimeter that you just can't get with another lens. Incredible separation between him and the background and totally nailed autofocus. This is ISO 5000 on the A9 and it's doing an incredible job. ISO 5000 looks great on the A9. The A9 is an excellent high ISO performer as well as just amazing autofocus. So one of the really nice things about having 20 frames a second on an A9 like this is this is going to be just a short little burst of shots and it's so much easier to capture that decisive moment when you're going through a burst like this. Action is happening fast and the difference between this frame which is kind of an awkward awkward stance awkward moment and this frame which is just one shot later is so huge. It's so much easier to capture that decisive moment when you have that kind of frames per second to play with. Also, this is cropped in really, really tight. This is on the A9 where we don't have a lot of megapixels to play with, but you can see that you can crop way in on even a 24 megapixel camera because it, this lens combination is so sharp, it kind of allows you to crop in a lot tighter than you would think. He just gets done throwing the ball, and I find the guy that he's throwing the ball to, but unfortunately at this point I still had face recognition on, and it was focusing on this guy right here instead of the back of our football player. So after this play, which ended up being like a pretty decisive play because it was an interception, I would have loved to got this shot. I also would have loved to have gotten the interception that happened a second later, but 
it had actually was picking out faces in the background rather than the players that I was trying to capture because I still had eye autofocus and face recognition on. So now it's finally found my players and then the ball was intercepted a second later. So if we look at one of these shots that's full frame and zoom in on it, you can see the amount of sharpness and resolution we're getting. I was kind of focused on his chest, which is where I tend to focus most of my shots on. It's easier to hit a chest than it is to hit a helmet, usually because their helmets are moving too quickly. Tons of sharpness. The combination of the A9 and the 600 F4 is incredible, as you would expect delivering everything you want to. But the problem comes when the action gets close to you. So luckily in this frame, Alvin Kamara is ducked down really low and I was able to get him all in the frame. But if we go to this next shot, when you're trying to shoot from the sidelines with a 600 millimeter, you end up getting a lot of this stuff where it's just, it's hard to both keep up with the action and get stuff in frame. So here we have Alvin Kamara's arm. Here is his arm and the ball. This is the full frame and it's just 600 millimeters is just too tight oftentimes. And when the action gets close to you like this, I end up shooting a lot of vertical shots just because I'm trying to get stuff in the frame, you know? You're able to get a human body in a vertical frame a little bit more easily. But it's way harder to track action in a vertical frame because you don't have as much horizontal peripheral vision. So it's more challenging to track stuff in a vertical frame. This is one of my favorite shots here just because of the framing and the eye contact. I love it anytime that it appears that the player is making eye contact with you. He obviously was not. I think he was worried about his safety at this point. This is Dak Prescott running full out towards camera. Still have nice sharpness. Um, just a really killer lens. I found that the A9 not only performs better with high ISOs, it focuses better and the lack of a blackout makes it way easier to track action. But having said that, the Sony a7R4 does focus pretty well. It focuses good enough for football. It performs okay at the higher ISOs. It does definitely show a little bit more grain than you're gonna see with a Sony a7R3 or definitely the A9. Where it comes into its own is when you have all of those megapixels to crop in on to recompose a shot. I think it's safe to say that the Sony a7R4 is a better all-around camera than the Sony a7R3 was. It's more than just a megapixel beast. It's a good all-around, you know, one-stop shop type of camera. The autofocus system can totally hold up to a sporting environment. And while it's not gonna be my first choice for sports, simply because of the blackout and the higher ISO performance isn't as great as, as it would be on the A9, it can totally hang and it, it's kind of a jack of all trades, even though it has those huge files. 600 millimeter F4 is not going to be a lens that many people watching this video are going to buy, simply because of the price tag. It's out of the reach of most people, but it is a lens that you can rent. I highly recommend renting this for any kind of outdoor sports and wildlife. For birding, this is like, you know, the holy lens if you're on the Sony system. It is a gorgeous lens for birding. For football, it's a little tight and you're gonna have to have another telephoto lens at your disposal to switch to when that action gets close to you. And that can be a real challenge if it's a deep pass and you you know have to try to reach down to your hip with a 70 to 200 and try to you know frame up a completely different lens. It's pretty difficult in that scenario, but while it's not my first choice for NFL football, it's an amazing lens for anything where you need 600 millimeters. All right, guys, hopefully this has been useful. If you guys like this kind of stuff, make sure you like and subscribe, hit the little bell, and we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, everybody.